How much time would we save each year if we just halved a repetitive three minute record keeping task, performed around 10 times a day each by a, tr a team of five trainers? Now, it's not an uncommon scenario. We might dismiss a, a little three minute task. It's just filling out a spreadsheet or firing off a bit of an email or a report after an assessment has commenced. So not an uncommon situation for an RTO. Now, what if we just halved that? Just took it, so there's still some work to be done. We're not automating the whole thing. What do you think? So today, I'd love to be able to share with you some strategies on how we go about connecting these things together. We'll talk about some of the principles and give you the basic foundation. And my hope is that armed with what you learn in this session, you can take away that information and start applying it in your own ways. The possibilities here are endless and limited only by your imagination. The basics of automation is that when something happens here, automatically go and do something else over there. You can have a play with that and see what works for you and continue, we do our test and we'll see what happens. Okay, I can see a notification's popped up there and it's telling me that a test was successful. Let's have a look at our Slack channel. Okay, here we go, Excelia Enrollments Bot. Heads up, we've just got an enrollment from Yahoo Sirius and you can see it's pulled all the data there and we have our link to Trello, our emojis as well, and we can have a look at the card that's just come through. Don't forget to turn on your zap and now it will run every time someone fills out the enrollment form and update and change that data. And there it is, you can see it all set up there, all the steps from the trigger right through to the final action. What often happens is it's quite tempting to go, let's automate everything and try and build it all into one complicated automation pathway. Well that's fraught with error and it's really hard to implement. So my recommendation would be just to choose one little high value target to automate. Just one little thing, that can be your experiment, and automate that, reap the benefits from that, you'll learn a lot as well, and then you can move on to the next target. And then you might look at something like assessments, not automating the whole thing, but just a subset. Maybe it's just that when a student submits an assessment, in maybe in your learning management system, that a notification is set off somewhere or it triggers something. So that it's, it's simple, but it helps a lot. It has a huge return on investment. And then what you're left with is a lot more breathing room. And that means that you can spend time getting closer with your students and building stronger relationships because you're not constantly caught up in the data entry. That's all happening in the back end. That's all automated. There is often a lot of things that we can automate. And so we wanna make sure that the time we spend looking at these things is getting the most bang for our buck. And so the three Vs can help with that and help you target your time on the thing that is gonna give you the best return on investment. And the first V is volume. So you're looking for things that are high volume. So things that people repeat over and over again every day and are possibly done by a lot of people every day repetitive tasks. The Remember from the three V's, we wanna look for volume as well. So try to find areas of high volume. Just make, make a little number of, you know, for example, in this particular one here, we say, well, we're getting 25 calls a day, but there's no connection to enter them into the system. So that's something that's manually being done. Is there a part of that that we can automate? So I am not at all interested in any kind of automation that tries to mimic genuine human interaction this concept because we can apply the cobot concept to automation so especially when you're looking at a really complex task and it's not something that you just want to let the robots go off and, and just do totally by themselves you can have uh, steps in there that allow for approvals so you can do this in Zapier, but you can also build it in other ways too. So it might be just subsets of the automation that happen. And a really simple example is in, again, in, for example, in Zapier, you might have an email that you want to have sent out, but you kind of want to cast a human eye over it before you just go and pump out the emails automatically. 
and there's a couple of other examples up there too and also some more advanced stuff so if you're using things like canvas lms if you're using zoom and maybe there's things that are just not quite catered for out of the box in zapier then there's some more advanced ways of working with things called webhooks so check that out if you if you're really interested interested in some extra stuff and I always love hearing from people with their ideas and suggestions. So do reach out through those links.